What's up guys, I'm here to talk a little bit about the psychiatric interview and this talk is more directed to uh, maybe third or fourth year medical students in their psychiatry rotation. Um, maybe it's a health professional that does um, interviews of patients with psychiatric issues. Uh, this interview technique is pretty similar to a medical history interview, but a little bit more focused to psychiatric um, conditions. Uh, also, the type of interview and the data that's being um, received by the person doing the interview can di differ depending on the setting, such a clinic or hospital uh, and so forth. So the basis, uh, some of the stuff that we'll talk about or will be mentioned in this video uh, include the chief complaint, a history of present illness, uh, which also includes a review of systems, past psychiatric history, substance abuse history, family history, medical, social history, and we'll also talk a little bit about uh, the mental status examination. And so all of these are essential components of a psychiatric interview and um, should be obtained by the clinician. Also, um, it would be ideal if uh, the patient uh, is compliant enough or can provide some of this information uh, to the best of their abilities. So first of all, what we have is the chief complaint. And what that is, is basically what the patient says in their own words uh, is the problem that, uh, that brings them and the clinician together. Uh, so not all the time uh, is it going to be accurate or really what is going to be the issue, but whatever it is that they say, even if they say, um, I have no problem, uh, the clinician inputs that in their own words and quotes, I have no problem as a chief complaint. Uh, even if, you know, the police brought him to the hospital because they were uh, running around the streets naked. And yes, that does happen. Uh, so then after the chief complaint, uh, the clinician will kind of investigate a little bit further. When did this start? How long has it occurred? What makes it better? What makes it worse? Is it getting better or worse? Uh, how has the patient been dealing with it? Have they been using coping skills like uh, talking with family, uh, taking medications, have tried some medications or therapy or uh, some breathing techniques? Uh, they talk to uh, their pastor or their doctor or, um, or are they just self-medicating with alcohol or drugs and trying to cover up whatever it is that's happening? And so this is really um, what's gonna help to frame uh, the rest of the interview as well. Um, and so once you uh, get an idea of what um, events have occurred during this time uh, and what's going on, then you can also ask more specific questions about uh, the psychiatric issues that are going on, any mood disorder, any problems with anxiety, uh, lost impairment with reality, um, are they having trouble focus or concentrating, any problems with uh, eating. Um, you could also investigate uh, medical uh, symptoms as well, like headaches, trouble breathing, heart races fast, upset stomach. Sometimes those can affect psychiatric conditions uh, too, and it may also be helpful to talk to family or friends about what's going on during this time. So oftentimes history will repeat itself. Uh, psychiatric history is no different. Uh, it's important to know uh, what sort of treatments uh, the people have had in the past. Have they ever been in a, uh, diagnosed with anything? Do they agree with the diagnosis or not? Um, were they on medications in the past? Was it helpful or did they have any bad reactions to it? Also, have they been in therapy? Um, individual therapy, group therapy, marriage counseling, or more intensive therapy that, like intensive outpatient programs, which are a few days a week. Um, also, psychiatric hospitalizations, how many, when were they, what was going on in their life at that time, is that sort of what's happening now or not, all those can play a role. Also a clinician will need to investigate thoroughly about suicidality. Have they mentioned any suicidal statements recently, uh, are they currently suicidal, have they had a history of suicide, is it just thoughts um, or do they actually have a plan? Uh, like gathering pills or um, getting firearms or do they have access to firearms? Also, 
are the firearms stored in a safe place or does anyone have access to them? Uh, sometimes uh, it's good if someone else has the keys to it so that the patients don't get to them if they are suicidal. Um, if they do have suicidal thoughts but never acted on it, what's prevented them from doing it? Is it their faith, their family, their friends? Um, so suicide is really important in the psychiatric assessment. So not as common as suicide, but also important to assess as homicide. And you also ask uh, if there is any thoughts of killing anybody, who do they want to kill, uh, what um, plans do they have to kill, have they tried to do that in the past. Uh, and so there's a law in California called the Tarasoff Law, um, which gives clinicians the duty to warn whoever is uh, at target. And this stemmed from a UC Berkeley foreign exchange student uh, who um, basically had the romantic uh, reaction to a girl who didn't return that favor and so the um, therapist, he said he wanted to kill her, the therapist um, didn't tell the girl, um, covered up the notes and actually he did go on and up and in killing that girl so uh, the clinicians have a duty to warn uh, people who are at risk of uh, homicide or those threats. Substance abuse history is uh, important because a lot of times I can affect the mental health or even be a cause of the problems. So you want to ask about alcohol, cannabis, um, any illegal drugs, have there been any seizures from alcohol withdrawal, any bad trips from cannabis or other drugs, um, uh, including non-prescription medications. What is their drug of choice? How much is it being used? How often? Does this lead to any of the th suicide or homicidal thoughts? Or has it led to any of their psychiatric hospitalizations? Have they tried any rehab or 12-step programs to be sober from it? Um, what was their longer period of sobriety if they were able to? Also, has it affected their legal uh, life, like ever been in jail or prison or DUI, any employment or relational problems from it? That could also give one um, an idea of how severe this is in their life. Family history is important to assess because oftentimes a mental health diagnosis like anxiety, depression, schizophrenia, alcoholism can run in families and what has helped in some of the family members may also help in the other family members. So it's important to assess uh, if any mental health, any family members have a mental health diagnosis, have they been treated for it, is there any substance abuse in the family, have they been treated for that. Also are there suicide attempts in the family? Also, you can sort of ask how did the family members react to it. Um, that can be a risk factor for the person themselves committing suicide if they had a family member doing it. Also, um, as I mentioned, investigate the treatments that the family members have been on. Uh, medical history is important to assess uh, the current or past medical conditions, uh, what medications are currently on for the medical conditions, have there been any recent changes to the medications, and how have they been able to cope with having medical problems. Uh, certain medical medications such as pain meds like opioids, maybe uh, steroids like prednisone, or anticholinergic medications, those can all have psychiatric side effects. Um, also some psychiatric medications like antipsychotics or lithium can have medical side effects. Uh, so it's just important to get a good understanding of what could medical causes going on. So the social history can be one of the most interesting and thorough aspects of a psychiatric interview. Uh, I can start basically about how they were from birth to how they developed, what their childhood life was like, their adolescence, their adulthood, level of education, their friendships and relationships. Um, basically, it can be very thorough uh, and um, it can sort of help direct treatment. Uh, um, also, you wanna check, um, are, do they have any hobbies or interests um, that they had over the years? Are they still doing them? Uh, are they religious uh, or spiritual? Do they actually attend uh, religious services? Those are just some of the things, to name a few. And lastly, throughout the time taking, gathering all this information from the patient, 
Uh, the clinician also keeping an eye on how do they look, uh, are they being cooperative or not cooperative, are they moving around a lot or not a much, how's their speech, they sound angry, happy, are they talking very fast, are they answering the questions linearly or are they not answering the questions and just going off topic, um, are they focused on uh, something that's not pertinent, uh, are they uh, confused, do they know where they are, do they know their name, uh, also, there's some uh, memory questions that you can ask and attend and their concentration to see um, also help gauge for the mental health stuff. So here are some of the resources used mainly for um, the clip art and uh, for some of the content. Uh, this is just a, an overview of what to do in a psychiatric interview. Um, God willing, down the road we will go into more detail about specific aspects of the exam, uh, such as what uh, mental status exam findings could be found in someone who's like manic, or someone who's depressed, or someone who has a dementia. Um, those are just some things. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. Uh, like and subscribe and give comments for some more uh, suggestions that you'd like to see or learn about.